what is parallelism types of parallelism instruction level parallelism advisor retune profiler followed by QA. This is the entire agenda and I made it very simple. So if you have any questions at any point in time, make a note of it and we can discuss that at the end of it without fail. Right? Let's get into the content. What is parallelism? Simple. It is nothing but compiler design technique and processes which are designed to execute operations which can be like load and store, the integer addition, the float multiplication, in parallel to improve the performance. I'm going to do the operations as the load and store, addition, float multiplication, all these can happen in parallel. I'm going to do the things in parallel so that it can improve the performance of the processor. Simple thing I can tell you, I'm getting three tasks right now to be done. So if I do all the three tasks in parallel, that is called parallelism, that's all. Right, so it is a design technique, that's all. The processor will execute the operations, which can be any of these, it can be load and store. Load is moving into the register for the operation. Store is getting out of the processor after the processing the operation and then after executing it and then pushing it onto some location for storing it. Integer addition, you know, float multiplication, you know, all these can be performed in parallel and that's what is referred as parallelism. Can we take a simple example to understand parallelism better? Yes, we need a human way of doing it, right? We need definitely understanding here and that's what is going to be explained right now. You are going to be given a very simple example with respect to vision we are going to connect it. You are seeing a bus. What are all the things that you will see in parallel? You will see the color, you will see the shape, depth and motion all at once. Remember, you are going to see color, shape, depth and many other features of the bus all at once. If you had to see all those things only one at a time, for example, First time I see only the color, second time only I see the shape, third time only I see the depth, fourth time only I see the motion. If I keep doing it, it is a disastrous way of doing things and it would take real long time. So we are having the capacity to see all at once and that's what is called as parallelism. Simple, we are gifted with the natural parallelism ability for us with this vision. So what do I mention here? Very simple, do multiple things in parallel. and. Bus is the simple example. You are seeing somebody, you are seeing everything out there in one shot. You are not seeing first the eyes, then the ears, then the nose, not that. We are seeing completely as a human. We are seeing what kind of dresses they are wearing. We are seeing if they are carrying the laptop or not. Do they have the phone or not. All these things come into our view, come into our perusal right in one go. And that's what is called as parallelism. There are four types of parallelism that you must know. The first one is data parallelism. Second one is bit level parallelism. Third one is task parallelism and the fourth one is instruction level parallelism. Out of which generally people will be too much dwelled towards the instruction level parallelism and that's very important too. This section is an important interview question discussion area as well. They may ask you in the interview what is parallelism and you may have to explain whatever example I have given you along with that if you can give a technical example that's going to be great. And you are going to then explain the types of parallelism because that will be the follow up question. So you need to talk about data parallelism, bit level, task parallelism and instruction level parallelism. I'll explain you all these one after another in a very neat way followed by that we'll go in depth into instruction level parallelism and pipelining will be connected there with some excellent examples. I'm sure you will like it. Well, what is data parallelism? Data parallelism is all about concurrent execution of the same task on each multiple computing core. I am going to go with concurrent execution. The term is very important here. Concurrent execution of the same task on each of the multiple computing cores, right? An example would be very easy for you to understand this concept. I'm now taking a single core system. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum up the contents of an array of size n. I have an array of size n and I am going to sum up the contents. Now for a single core system, I'm taking a single core, not a dual core. I am taking a single core system, one thread would simply sum up the elements starting from 0 and it will go on till n minus 1. This is for the single core system. But when you come to the dual core system, a thread A could be running on the core 0. It could sum the elements from 0 to n by 2 minus 1 and parallelly thread B could be running on the core 1, could sum up the elements, rest of the elements. So what happens? Two threads would be running in parallel on separate computing cores. This is called data parallelism. This is a very important concept. 
data parallelism is all about concurrent execution of the same task on multiple computing cores right so i gave an example there is some addition example given here first off would be done with one core the second off would be done with another core and this is called as data parallelism now the next one is called bit level parallelism what is parallelism i explained you doing multiple things we see a bus is the example what is data parallelism i have an addition operation to be done with a array and i am doing the first off in one core and doing the second off with another core and i go with data parallelism through this approach and the next one is called as bit level parallelism this is a very important type of parallelism this is a form again of parallel computing which is based on increasing the processor word size i reiterate this type of parallelism is completely connected with processors word size what is the connector how is it going to help i'll explain you this clearly in this type of parallelism what happens is with increasing the word size reduces the number of instruction is the logic i am going to increase the word size which is going to reduce the number of instructions the processor must execute in order to complete the operation in order to perform an execution so greater the size of the greater the length of the words is going to be better so i am going to increase the word size and it will in turn reduce the number of instruction requirements and that's to be explained with an example i am going to give that right now we are going to take a simple case where we are going to take an 8 bit processor for an instance this 8 bit processor must add two 16 bit integers i reiterate the 8 bit processor must add two 16 bit integers right the first lower order of the 8 bits the first eight lower order bits from each integer first will be added and then we will go ahead with the eight higher order bits and then two instructions are needed here to complete single operation i take the lower order 8 bits i take the higher order 8 bits and here we are forced to go with two instructions for a single operation which could be avoided now what did i say in the beginning i told you that with the increasing the word size with the increment in the word size you can reduce the number of instructions now in this case i have an 8 bit processor where i need to add two 16 bit integers so i have to eventually increase the number of instructions because of the requirement now what i do a processor with a 16 bit would be able to complete this operation in a single instruction this is called bit level parallelism you are increasing the word size so that's very simple understand that point now task parallelism what is task parallelism task parallelism is a very 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 important task parallelism means concurrent execution of different task concurrent execution of different task earlier we were speaking about the same task earlier we were discussing the bit level now we are going with the task level parallelism where we are thinking about we are discussing about the concurrent execution of the different task on multiple computing cores i have multiple cores available with me and we are going to establish the task level parallelism through the concurrent execution of the different tasks on multiple cores i have multiple cores different task that's the connect now we can have a, a simple example here i'm going to take two threads each is going to perform unique operation on the array of elements each is going to perform unique so i have got two threads one thread will be doing some unique operation another thread will be doing another unique operation now these threads are operating in parallel which are operating on separate computing cores but all of them but both of them is going to perform unique operation so i have two persons working with me they are going to do two different tasks and they are two individuals different individuals that's exactly called task parallelism i do two different tasks i repeat task parallelism is nothing but concurrent execution of different task i reiterate that i put a code there it is different task on the computing cores right on the different computing cores on the multiple computing cores that's what is called as task level parallelism this is a very important concept do not forget it this question particularly in the interview if you are attending something with uh, a processor related or if you are attending with computer architecture or compiler or design related this question is quite prominent so please understand what is task level parallelism and next we come to is instruction level parallelism what is it we are going to go ahead with simultaneous execution of multiple instructions from the same program i have got five lines in the code if i can execute all the five lines at one shot 
simultaneously i call it instructor le- instruction level parallelism that's all sir i have heard of pipelining is it related to pipelining yes we will connect that properly hold on until that so we have discussed different types of parallelism till now this is the one which is most important and most prominent as well instruction level parallelism is all about simultaneous execution of multiple instructions from the same program i have got one program it has got 10 lines if i capable of executing 7 8 lines or 10 lines or whatever based on the levels that we can go ahead with if we can execute that parallelly simultaneously from the same program it is called as instruction level parallelism right pipelining is a form of instruction level parallelism naturally and normally we are all going ahead with pipelining and we are extracting as much as we can through the pipelining to get the instruction level parallelism at the best level so pipelining is a form of instruction level parallelism remember it instruction level parallelism will enable you to go ahead with execution of simultaneous execution of multiple instructions from the same program and pipelining is one of the ways to achieve this task and that's coming under instruction level parallelism is it clear till now we discussed four types of parallelism first one is data parallelism second one is bit level parallelism third one is task parallelism and the final one that we discussed is instruction level parallelism i have given examples for all of this and till now i believe that is very clear so we are going to dive deeper into it right we need to know more about uh, instruction level parallelism remember from 1985 from the time the process started evolving right pipelining was the major concept that this processor makers used to overlap the execution of instruction and to improve performance there was no major option available by then so pipelining was there from 1985 remember whenever i wanted to go ahead of simultaneous instruction execution i go with pipelining it is from 1985 so the potential overlap among the instruction is referred as instruction level parallelism and pipelining helped us to achieve this instruction level parallelism so when it was introduced this was first introduced in ibm stretch 7030 was the model number in in 1959 way back in 1959 this was introduced and then later on it was it was evolving much faster than expected and now we have multiple level pipelining available with multiple levels of support available for the instruction execution in parallel and it provides better results also so cdc 6600 incorporated pipelining and the use of multiple functional units that happened later and intel i486 was the first pipeline implementation of i832 architecture so remember this i486 this was the first implementation first pipeline implementation so all these are historical so see the way things have been going so we have been using pipelining from almost 40 years ago we started doing it and still it is evolving and there are a lot of happenings that go around this that's why you are studying this paper right now it is not at over we will still evolve we will still go ahead further right well can we go ahead with a simple recap of pipelining what are all the things that are important in pipelining how pipelining helps all these are to be covered right now and we will take a deep breath and we will get in into pipelining i will also explain you very clearly what are all the hazards that are connected with pipelining how do we overcome that can be discussed and most importantly why do you have to go with pipelining will be substantiated through this discussion i hope till now everything is clear what are all the things we discussed i will go ahead with a quick recap we started with understanding what is parallelism i explained you with a simple example of what is human way of getting it parallelized and most importantly types of parallelism which started with data parallelism then it went on to bit level then task level and instruction level i explained you what is instruction level parallelism a little better and we have also referred the history and importantly we are here now to understand how exactly pipelining has happened pipelining evolution has happened what are all the stages in pipelining what are all the hazards in pipelining i am going to talk about all these right now and i am sure you will like it